Deep in darkness, far from warmth and sun and moons, I lie, quiet as the stone that surrounds me, imprisoning my hunched body in a dreadful womb. I cannot stand, cannot stretch. I can only curl in a ball, a withered fossil of the man that was, hands tough behind my back, naked on cold rock, all alone with the dark. What's up, everyone? Michael R. Schultheis here, author of the Rossabel Saga, Come and get you today with my review of Morning Star by Pierce Brown. This is book three of the Red Rising series. Now, there's going to be some minor spoilers for books one and two, but this is a non-spoiler review of Morning Star. So if you're new here, we're going to do like usual. I'll summarize the book. We'll talk characterization. We'll talk plot. We'll talk world building. I'll give an overall rating out of a scale of five. And then we'll talk about who is this book for and who is it maybe not for. So let's get started. All right, so again, summary. There'll be some spoilers for books one and two. We ended book two with a shocking betrayal. Daro is undone. He's betrayed. Things are looking just absolutely lost in every way. Um, he's been taken, unmasked and taken captive. And... Who knows what's up with anybody else? So this story starts with him in that predicament. And then we look at how he gets out of that predicament. It's very thrilling. And then the struggles associated with him sort of coming back to the Sons of Ares, uh, the, the Resistance, fighting against the society. Now, I'm going to stop right here and say that the thrills and the, the sense of just this pulse-pounding adventure that started in book one, and that, if, if anything, became even better in book two. It's just absolutely gobsmacking here. If anything, it only gets more thrilling. This book is just packed with action, drama, political machinations, and the wonderful just, you know, character questions. Uh, and essentially anything, essentially everything you'd want in a very character-driven, action-oriented story and if I'm kind of gushing a little bit here, well, guilty as charged. This is the kind of book that is just what I live to find and what I live to write. So with this in view, let's talk about characterization. Well, what can I tell you that I haven't already said about book one, Red Rising, or book two, Golden Sun? Pierce Brown keeps delivering this outstanding character work and... The relationships between the characters who I care about, uh, you have a lot of very fraught and conflict-laden dynamics that feel believable and keep you turning the page going, oh my gosh, are they going to still be friends? Are they going to become friends again? This can't be where things stay. And I love the sense of personal stakes that is just that ratcheted up with these, 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 these dynamics and everybody's trying to to handle the personal stuff and the broader questions, and it all ties in, it all matters. It's not, you know, it's not just, oh, some petty drama. No, the the character questions are fundamental questions of loyalty, of belief, of conviction, of what to do about these sweeping events that they're all caught up in and trying to impact. And and I love that sense of how the personal and the, the broader story world are intertwined and connected. You know, what, what Pierce Brown has given us in this story is not just some simplistic story of, you know, a revolution for equality. It's much more insightful. And there are some very important character questions about the, the price of revenge or vengeance and the need for stability, which, you know, is, too much stability can be a bad thing, um, especially if the, the system that it's, that it's sort of encasing is inherently inherently a pathological one, but too much chaos can be a very damaging thing too. So you need to introduce enough change to a society that's developed in a certain direction for a long time, and these people are having to do that. What this poses for the characters, I think, is just wonderful character questions about what kind of people they want to be. And in... What is, what is the cost for us of this amount of change or of the decisions that they have to make? And I, I think this aspect 
of it talking about how the characters reacted to the wider world. It's just phenomenal. And I ate it up with a spoon. It was just absolutely superb. All of Pierce Brown's bigger questions about politics and society, all of it works because the characters work. Darrow in particular, a red who by now can see things from a gold point of view, has gold friends and gold associates, and doesn't want mayhem, but he does understand, you know, we need, we need change, but if we go too far, if we empower the uh, most violent and destabilizing factions of the rebels, uh, that's going to be a problem. And he makes some rather significant and costly decisions here. And so the, the character questions that I think this book raises are profound. And it handles them in a wonderfully human way. You have human beings trying to make decisions weighing incredible consequences. The fate of their societies rests on what they do and, and how they respond to incredible challenges. Besides Darrow, we have some wonderful secondary characters. I, I love the dynamic with Ragnar, the elite obsidian warrior, who we met in book two. I'm not going to say too much. I talk about a great friendship. Uh, Severo, speaking of friends, his best outing. Oh, man. The, there's just that, that wonderful combination of he's this kind of weird, obsessive little guy who is also really dangerous. And you, you just, you can't not like him. And you, you can't not root for him and, and, and Daro and the friendship that they have, and, and look at how it's tested, and it all feels very real. And there's some very raw stuff. They, they, they have parts of the story where they're kind of at loggerheads, because they don't always see things eye to eye. And I love that, because it's like, well, yeah, you and your best friends will clash sometimes, especially if you're dealing with huge sweeping events, trying to fight this war. Mustang. Virginia Al Augusta. So I'm not going to say too much. Her arc here gets spoilery if I'm not careful. I love how she's trying to figure Darrow out. What kind of man is he? Can he be better than the worst elements of, of the rebels? And all of that was just... And then there were the trust issues between them. Because guess what? <laughs> He's a red, and he didn't tell her, and he couldn't tell her, but at the same time, you got to be able to trust the people who are close to you. So this is where I say that the bigger dynamics in the society have huge personal impacts that feel real, feel relatable, feel understandable. Uh, the Jackal, Mustang's brother. Again, fantastic villain. Wonderfully terrible villain. Now, we could be here all day, me raving about how much I love the characterization, but, you know, you could just stop the video right now and go binge read these three books and you'd be fine. But you know what? Let's talk plot anyways. So, Golden Sun had a plot like a runaway freight train, and I feel like this one took off and broke the sound barrier or something. The, the way that Pierce Brown builds on everything that we've, that's come before and ratchets the tension up to 11, so to speak, and just... The, the epic battles, the twists and turns and surprises, there are some surprises that will floor you in this one. I think they floored me anyway. Uh, and I, I love just everything he does with with the, the combat and the maneuverings. And somehow he keeps everything fresh with all of these epic battles. I never feel like we're doing the same thing over again. I'm like, oh my god. Yeah. No, it, it is always something new. All that to say, plot, yes, across the board win. This book has the, the perfect balance between fast-paced action events and enough time for the story to breathe so we get some good character dynamics and all of it. Wonderful. Total win. World building, again, not much I can really tell you uh, <laughs> after two videos, this being the third. I, I, I love what he does with the society, with the different colors, the caste system. So I love that we get to see the Obsidian homeland here. It's a part of Mars that feels very Antarctic. The gold set it up so the Obsidians are very ignorant of the whole deal. They don't understand that they are living in a space-age society. 
Uh, they, they, there are golds who LARP as Norse gods. That's a, a fun aspect of the story, I thought. I really enjoyed that. So, again, world building across the board win. Loved it. Which brings me to my overall rating, and oh my god, I must sound like a broken record because this is the sixth, according to my records, the sixth straight five out of five star rating I've given on this channel, and I'm sorry, not. But no other rating will do. A very, very well-deserved five out of five. Go read this book. It's incredible. It rocked my freaking world. So, who is this book for? Well, do you like epic fantasy? Do you like space opera? As I've been saying, go get this book. If you've been sleeping on this series so far, what are you doing with, with your life? Go read these books. Now, some specific comparisons. If you like Sun Eater, Dune, The Expanse, if you like any of those series, go read this. Do you like epic fantasy? Well, there's an excellent chance you'll love these books. I find it no great mystery why these books are so popular, have a huge fan base. They are phenomenal. Who is this book not for? Well, if you don't like fun, give this book a pass. Okay. I'm being silly, but in all seriousness, there's not much more I can say at this point. I think very few people are going to not like this book in, in, any, in any meaningful sort of categorizable sense. I mentioned before, I'll see it again. This is not hard science fiction, so if you're looking for a hard science fiction read for your next read, give this a pass. If you want something light and cozy, this is definitely not that, so give it a pass. Um, other than that, what more is there to tell? These books are some of the best character-oriented adventure fiction on the market. Go read them. So how about you? Have you read any of the Red Rising books by Pierce Brown? Do you want to? Are they on your TBR? And if not, why not? Uh, anyway, let me know in the comments. I would love to talk to you there. If you enjoyed this video, please do like and subscribe. It does help us to grow the channel. And you know what, friends? I really, really appreciate it so much. Thank you again for watching, and I hope to catch you on the next video.